Hey guys, Tim here for Sharp Eleven Music. In today's video, we're gonna check out some concepts that Julian Losh uses in his solo guitar rendition of Will Meet Again and see how we can come up with something like this. So those were the first eight bars of a certain jazz standard where I applied some of the principles we're going to see. By the way, give me your best guess of what that standard might be in the comment section. Full disclosure though, you're not gonna win anything. So the first concept is secondary dominance. You probably have heard of it before, but it is an incredibly valuable tool. And the way that he uses it is starting from bar the end of bar 10 so that's d major and then we go into g sharp diminished g sharp diminished is actually e e7 with a flat 9 but the flat 9 has uh, replaced the root so resolves into A. And then we have this fiddly thing. So B flat, B flat is actually a tritone substitute of E, so it's again a secondary dominant. So B flat to A. So we have D, G sharp diminished, A, B flat, back to A. Then the second concept is right after that part. This is just G major seven. Whoops. And the concept is that of suspensions, and that is a very colorful and powerful tool as well. And it's a little bit under discussed, I think. So, in this case, the A major triad is the target note, uh, target chord, but it's being suspended with, with two diatonic notes above. So we have from bottom to top, D, E, and B, and the D goes to C sharp and the B goes to the A. So these are suspensions for those notes. Here again, F sharp, D, G, F sharp goes to G, G goes to F sharp, that's just A7, and then this, the C sharp is a, is a suspension for the B, and the A is a suspension for the G. In turn, this G major triad is a suspension for a D major triad. So the B is a suspension for the A and the G is one for the F sharp. And you can create very colorful chords uh, using this method. 
And that's actually one of the, the things I used heavily in that opening sequence. And then he, I just have to mention this augmented dominant A augmented lovely. It has nothing to do with the principles, but it is just cool. Then we have minor subdominance. In other words, the four minor, which occurs in bar 76. So again, we have D major, A goes to A sharp, like in the melody. And then he plays an E minor over G instead of a B minor to, res to resolve the, the B. He makes it dominant. And then he plays this. So this is G minor, basically. G minor 6. And because this G resolves into the F sharp, the major third of our root chord or our target chord, it gives a very strong um, dominant to tonic feel or sound. Again, this is also a sort of suspension. The B flat is a suspension for the A and the G is one for the F sharp. And the minor subdominant I used in the ending cadenza type, type thing in our opening example. Our fourth concept is tritone substitution, which he uses again right after this example. Right here. So it's B, F, B. And once again, right here. So we have this whole... A D. He even plays both E flat and A very br briefly to D. I'm guessing a tritone substitution is not very new for you. And last but not least, we have something which I call dominant median relations. It's a little variation on chromatic median relation, you know, the whole giant steps thing. So what that basically means is that the chords are related by a third, in this case, a minor third, and it's their dominant chords, so dominant, median, blah, blah. So diminished chords are related to dominant chords and diminished is symmetrically built in minor thirds. So you can pretty much do the same thing with dominant chords. If we have A7, A minor third up is C7. And if you remember the G minor six, that very much resembles a C7 
shade. So there was a clue already there. If we move another minor third up from the C7, we have E flat 7, which is our tritone substitute. And yet another minor third up from E flat, we have F sharp, which is what he plays here. So he's coming from A7 to D. So So if you have F sharp over A7, that's your 13, major third, major third, and flat nine. So that works. And these all come from the diminished scale, half, half tone, whole tone. So there you have it, five very useful and very colorful ways of expanding the harmony. By the way, this stuff also works if you're playing over a vamp. So let's say you're playing, I don't know, so what or whatever. You can imply different chord changes over that D minor. Obviously you can do D minor A7, but you can also, as we have seen, insert a lot of things between that D minor and A7 and back from A7 to D minor. For example, if you're interested in any Skype lessons or whatever, you can check out our Patreon. Also, if you want a lot more extras, go check it out. We also have more detailed explanations of this and also the tabs for that intro segment. Anyway, I hope you have fun with this. I certainly did when I worked on this little intro segment and it's all just these things that we just saw. You have to use your own taste and preference as to how much you want to put in there. But I think I managed to squeeze in four out of five of them. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you guys next time.